Welcome to another AUG blog audio post located at AUGforums.com. That's A-U-G-F-O-R-U-M-S.com. You can find the specific audio post at AUGforums.com slash audio post 15. That's audio post and the number 15. This is your host, Tim Rodman, coming to you live on Tuesday, May 5th, 2020, from somewhere between Dayton and Columbus, Ohio. I pulled off the road here on my road trip. And in this audio post, we've got an Acumatica customer interview with Derek Elledge. And Derek, I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, thank you, Tim. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm a big fan of all forms, use it quite a bit to gather some information and new ideas on how to use it. So thank you last year. So just a little bit about what Power Storage Solutions is. We are a engineering fulfillment installation and then service and preventative maintenance afterwards for DC power systems. So when you think of a DC power system, what we basically do is when you lose your main source of power, typically electricity, we bridge the gap between coming onto another source of electricity or making sure that you have time to shut down properly by providing a battery backup system that keeps um, things like hospitals, telecommunications, data centers, utilities, um, petrochemical plants up and running so they can operate and operate safely. So that's what we do where you have, um, we're about a 20 operate safely. So that's what we do where you have, um, we're about a $24 million company with 65 employees. We worked in 43 states last year providing services for our customers. Um, some of our major customers are companies like Exxon, Dow Chemical, Calpine Utilities, um, Florida Power and Light, Luminant Utilities. Um, we do stuff with Cyrus One on the data center side, um, Equinix, and um, we do a bunch of stuff with some banks like Wells Fargo and Bank of America. And then um, we have, you know, during the COVID-19, we've had a lot of hospital work trying to make sure that they're up and maintaining all of their critical power during that time. So trying to make sure that they're up and maintaining all of their critical power during that time. So it's been a real blessing for us to be part of the critical infrastructure because I can't imagine what it would be like if, you know, a utility went down because they couldn't switch over um, power to another grid or we had telecommunications um, going down for like CenturyLink. And, you know, so we've been out there working and keeping the country running. Awesome. Love it. What about you? What's your specific role at the company? So I'm Vice President of Operations. I'm also one of the uh, three partners that um, we started up Power Storage Solutions in May of 2018. Um, all three of us came from interstate batteries. Um, um, all three of us came from interstate batteries. Um, we were one of the, I was one of the founding um, guys over at Interstate that helped write the business plan to launch a division called Interstate Power Care. And the big focus for them were working on battery systems that needed more than just a distribution sale like they had in automotive. So we took that company and we grew it to about um, 25 to $30 million. And then they decided to spin off that division. And uh, I was over the operations supply chain side, one of the other guys was over the service side, and one of the other gentlemen was the uh, president of sales, and we came together and we did a corporate buyout and brought over 55 people at the time from Interstate Batteries over in the company, new ERP system, 
you've been a busy guy. <laughs> <laughs> very busy, very a lot of long hours, but a lot of great people helping us support it. Um, you know, so that's I think that's one of the reasons we were kind of the customer of the year because you look at our story of how we came into existence. Um, we had originally put in a bid for um, buying the company. Um, we were we came out second in the bid process, and so we were looking to go in and be merged into another another company. And then that deal kind of fell through, and Interstate Batteries came to us and said, "Hey." you know what, you guys were the second bid. We would really like to go with you, plus you're going to take care of more of our our team than the other company was. And so you guys still interested? Sure, we are very much. We need to close in 30 days. Well, 30 days, uh, hire everybody, much less how are we going to operate. So we came up with a, an agreement with Interstate Batteries to have a firewall back door into their operating systems that we were running on currently. So we um, took over the business. We worked with them on, um, on being able to continue to operate on the systems that we had, but obviously then we had to go in through, through a um, VPN and a firewall, and it's kind of a pain in the butt to, and then, you know, continuing to use all those five different operating systems. And at the same time, we had to go out and find a solution to how are we going to run the company. So looking at what we were operating on over there, we had five different operating systems that we were all trying to merge, that we were all trying to merge together very unsuccessfully because we had systems that were were on our mainframe, we had systems in the cloud, and they just weren't talking well together. We had, you know, we were doing our CRM and quoting on salesforce.com. We were running time on Workday. We were running expenses on Concur. We were running our service management through, through S2K um, by Davisware, and then all that was overlaid onto our accounting system of E1. And it was a complete nightmare to try to get these systems all talking well together because they weren't all on one operating system like the plugins now for Acumatica. So <laughs> we had a whole lot of trouble. It was now for Acumatica. So <laughs> we had a whole lot of trouble. So we knew what we had to do. We had to use that system, but we knew what we didn't want. We didn't want to be a company that couldn't work remotely. We knew we wanted one operating system to do everything that we needed as much as we possibly could without any bolting on anything. And so then we began our search of what we were going to do. So you started May 2018. How long yep. until you began your search for new systems? <laughs> we we actually started our search a little bit before May. Um, we started um, back in about April. Um, we actually began to look. We didn't even know what Acumatica was at the time. Um, we were looking at uh, oh. Um, Sage. Um, we actually looked at QuickBooks to start with. We quickly found out we were way too big for that. Then we kind of migrated to looking at Sage, and then we were looking at uh, NetSuite, and then our our partner, Clients First, um, out of Dallas here, the fantastic people, by the way, um, introduced us to Acumatica. And then as soon as we saw what Acumatica was and what it was about, and we did a couple of demos, compared pricing to NetSuite um, and, and to Sage, and we thought, this is the direction we want to go. It provides us the ability to take all five operating systems and layer it all into one. We can do our full quote to cash. We can do our CRM, our contact management. We can quote. We can manage product, full quote to cash. We can do our CRM 
our contact management, we can quote, we can manage projects, we can manage service, we can manage um, sales orders, we can manage our inventory, time, um, expenses, all within the same system. And one of the things that we really thought was great, it's, it's a software as a service, so that's, so we're constantly getting fed the latest and greatest coming out of the company. Um, and we are all cloud-based, so we operate on, an, on the Amazon SE3 servers, and um, we absolutely love that because now when, one of the most frustrating things in the world for our sales team and our 40 technicians that are running around the country is to get into a hotel, have to do their, you know, they've spent the day calling on customers or working or maybe working even we completely eliminated that with the Acumatica solution. And it just freed up time, it freed up business, and it freed up our solution. And, and it's really been great as we've been in, you know, what we're going through today with COVID-19, we're not missing a beat. It doesn't matter where our guys are. They can get on, they can work, our team is working from home, working on the road, and it's been, it's been really fantastic the way we've seen that freedom by making this decision early on. That's awesome. Yeah, a lot of companies just starting off just don't have the, the time to think about new systems. You tackle that as one of the first things or even before the first things back in April. Um, <laughs> it seems like your timing is right. You, you, now you're not having to deal with that. Um, I, absolutely, Tim. I mean, it's we knew what we wanted, and and we didn't. We actually didn't think we were going to find it. We didn't think we could. We everything on our bucket list of what we wanted, we didn't think was out there. And then surprise, surprise! Here's Acumatic, and and it checked off every bucket that we had. And you know, now they even have a mobile app, right? So everything's on the mobile app. Um, there's so much things we can do on that. Um, and so expense reports are the easiest expense reports I've ever done in my life with their mobile app. So really fantastic um, the way that that all came together. So let's see. When you, think, when you say go cloud, ahead. are you actually Acumatica SaaS or are you hosted in a third party or your own cloud environment? We're, we're actually SaaS. Okay. We're so Acumatica. Yeah. It, yeah, we're ha yeah, we're ha we're hosted on Acumatics Cloud. We did not want to host it ourselves. We didn't see the reason for that infrastructure, right? So you kind of look at you know where we came from. I mean, and and all the things that we looked at as overhead. I mean, interstate batteries when we left had about forty five percent of their workforce was tied up in IT. We didn't want to. We didn't have those resources. We're we're a small, you know, we're a small company, obviously trying to grow, and you know we had to, you know, look at what, how we can leverage, um, you know, the software, how we can leverage the companies and the partnerships that we can form. So, you know, we took a twenty, you know, at the time I said we bought the company, it was about twenty-two million dollars, right? And we knew we were going to shrink down a little bit because when you transfer, you're going to lose hours, right? And we knew we were going to shrink down a little bit because when you transfer, you're going to lose some business. And there was some business that we wanted to shed. So we shrunk down to about $18 million when we transferred this over. But when we took over the company, month one, we've got to be up and running, putting techs out into facilities and and um, transferring over about a million and a half to two million dollars worth of business a month. And so we're running as we're growing and as we're expanding. So we had to go out and say, okay, Acumatica is the solution we want. How do we implement it and how do we implement it fast? And so you start looking at it. I have one IT guy, you know, for our whole company. So I started looking, okay, we can leverage clients first personnel, right? And the great thing about that is I can leverage them once and I don't have to pay for them once and I don't have to pay for that, that 
really great IT um, support ongoing. So, you know, we brought on clients first. They came on board, um, and we started to go down the path of how are we going to get it implement. Um, and we took and migrated the full company in about 60 days from beginning to end by all the great import scenarios that we had, all the great advice on how to set up projects, how to set up um, sales orders, getting the inventory in and set up correctly, getting all the systems. The system set up is extremely easy. Um, the hardest thing I think for us to hardest thing for us to gravitate to is kind of under we used um, I think it was POs from the customer, right? So I mean there were some terminology changes, but then you also had to see how if you really took the time to see how Acumatica flowed your business, they, they put a lot of thought into the general flow of the business. And I would tell you that 90% of your business will flow naturally through the Acumatica system. There's probably, in most companies, I would tell you that there's probably 5 to 10% of your business that is unique enough that you need to customize. And that's what, and that's what we found is that we could flow our business channel, our business model, almost exactly through the Acumatica model, which made our implementation. So is that we could flow our business channel, our business model, almost exactly through the Acumatica model, which made our implementation so quick. And we actually had some very motivated people <laughs> to get up and running because getting <laughs> off the systems, we, we had no choice. We were going to be off by December 1st. Um, so, you know, we started, you know, you think about it, May, we started in April kind of vetting. Um, May, June, June timeframe, we selected Acumatica. Um, we had a conflict of personnel um, where we needed, we wanted to start in in July. They didn't have the resources to match up to us. So we tried to switch um, partners, which was a total, we went through three partners and then ended up back first really fast because we were just like, they don't understand our business. They don't understand our business. They don't understand our business. And so we flipped finally gave Mike Conte a call and he's like, man, I got the resources now, we can go. And we moved and we moved very fast starting in September. So we went September, um, started in September kind of matching up our processes. Then October, November did the conversion and we were up and running in December. Um, you know, so very fast turnaround on flipping that over. I mean, and when we went live, we went live with all the accounting, all the inventory, um, shipping, sales orders, projects, and um, all of our customers in the system. Um, and so, you know, we had um, shipping, sales orders, projects, and um, all of our customers in the system. Um, and so, you know, we had, to, we had to take pretty much everything up to can run the business. We decided to shed the CRM. Did you have field um, service did, on there as well? We didn't. I think that's probably, yeah, I would say that our, my biggest um, mistake on going live is we decided to go projects and sales orders because projects provided a functionality of managing WIP through a customization that, that we came up with better than um, the service module. Because a lot of our projects run um, months. So managing a WIP was very important to us. 
So I think looking back on it and knowing what we know now, we could have opened with the service module and done some outside reporting to manage WIP better. And we would have probably provided us some better functionality around scheduling than we have now. But projects allowed that management of WIP immediately for us. So we went the project service route, or project sales order route. Um, we have still not implemented service and it's on the roadmap to do, but we also know that once we decide to go the service route, now we've got to go through a lot of retraining again. So I've lost some of the momentum that we had initially of, of the excitement of people wanting to work in the system that their life has become easy, <laughs> much easier than it used to be, truthfully. And um, so you lose some of that excitement and you know that you've got to rebuild some of that excitement and now I've got to build buy-in and I've got to build um, um, why is it better for you and better for the company to do that. You, so, so, you know, that's one of the keys, I think, of when you go to implement up front, understand where you want to go and why you want to go there because your team is going to be, your team is going to be motivated to get there, right? I had some outside motivation that most people don't. But if you can paint that big picture of, of why we're going and why, you know, it's kind of like Moses, you know, Hey, we're going to go to the Holy Land, and this is why we're going to the Holy Land. Picture of, of why we're going, and why you know, it's kind of like Moses, you know. Hey, we're going to go to the Holy Land, and this is why we're going to the Holy Land, and this is why, and how we're going to get there, and and this is why it's going to be so great once we get there. And we had that vision as a team, and if I would have implemented that service. I think it would have just rolled right in and it'd been much easier to do than it's going to be doing now. Kind of went off on yeah, the you tangent hit a, there. A point. <laughs> no, I think you hit a big point that I think is key in any implementation and and that is momentum. Momentum is something that's hard to get and it's easy to lose. Now you at least were fortunate enough to go live before losing some momentum. You know, some people don't even get live and then they lose momentum and they kind of have to restart the project. But at least you got an initial core live. And then the second challenge is, how do you have a more scaled down version of momentum to have continuous improvement type of a mindset going forward so that yes. you don't get stuck again on a system? And it's not just the system and the technology, it's being able to adapt your business processes to meet what's always a changing business environment. I think it's a challenge every company faces, right? How you achieve that continuous innovation. Yeah, because if you're not innovating, you know somebody else is. And so you've got to continue to stay. That is one of the things that, you know, being on the SAS program and in Acumatica stopping some of their um, support of older um, versions, it's constantly feeding us to stay current and make the upgrades. So we've made a conscious decision. We will We will upgrade once a year. We will be um, one version behind. So we every every January we're going through, and we're under, we every every January we're going through, and we're implementing the newest version. Oh, not the newest version. The not the R2. So we just did 2019 R1, and then next year we'll do 2020 R1. So it forces you to stay. Compliant, say, and it forces you to innovate, and forces you to take advantage of some of the changes. You know, so we we put together our roadmap this year, and every year our roadmap starts with first and foremost um, taking advantage of of the upgrade, and then okay, what's in the upgrade that we we can do some quick hits with? Like this year, it was the highlighting of GIs, major upgrade. There, so we have, you know, the highlighting of the GIs. Hey, red's out of tolerance. Why is this pass due? You know, so those type of things. Tolerance. Why is this pass due? You know, so those type of things. And then 
business account, the, the business events upgrade, that's big. So, you know, we can now better manage how we send out order acknowledgements and invoice and, and feedback. And so then, um, you know, for us, we're working on quotes. We're working really hard on our CRM um, and business accounts. Um, one of the big things that we did this year is we worked with um, Clients First on a customization to business accounts to make it so it's a one-stop shop for all of our, for our sales guys. So, you know, they can go in and look at all their opportunities, right? Or they can go in and look at all their sales orders, or they can go in and look at all their projects. So then we've created now a business account GI that has everything kind of in one, one space because they're, our sales team is typically not in customer invoices. And it's all right there on one screen that they can then click through and look at, hey, what do I got working with these guys? What do I have open with these guys on my sales orders or my projects? And it, and it makes kind of a nice one-stop shop. So that was really cool. That was a lot of fun. Kind you know if that's something they, you find they use in their web browser or they use the Acumatica mobile app for? Web browser. Not many of our team no. uses the um, the mobile app as much as I would like them to. Um, I think our, our actually our technicians probably use the mobile app more than anybody else. Um, and uh, but. We're working that that direction um, towards getting a little bit more mobile focus. What other types oh. of customization? Whenever someone gets involved in Acumatica, in my experience, most of the time they wind up doing customizations just because they can. That's one of the strengths of it. They can tailor it to their business. But then the problem is always, well, someone else must have done this. Right, so I, I always like digging out. What what are some other ones that you might have done yourself? Okay. Um, well, this is one of the, we don't do a whole lot of customization ourselves, right? Um, we get our partner. We work with clients first to do most of any of our major customizations. Um, there's a couple of things that we did. Um, one of our keys was we wanted to customize as little as possible and to manage our business. Um, so we tried not to do much customization, um, but there's a few things that we did. Um, we tweaked the projects, um, so all of our projects have a stage on them, so we know exactly what stage that they are. Do much customization, um, but there's a few things that we did. Um, we tweaked the projects, um, so all of our projects have a stage on them, so we know exactly what stage that they are during the projects from, from beginning to end. It starts out, you know, with creation to engineering to um, purchasing to planning to schedule to end process to um, um, F our field service report submittal to, to um, ready to invoice to um, review. So every project gets reviewed and um, so, you know, it's a really cool thing. And then we have dashboards. So we know, you know, how many projects are in each step, how many dollars are in each step. Um, that was kind of a cool little deal. Um, we created a deal for um, purchase orders. So when you, when you enter in your purchase rights over to your sales order on your drop ships, so the drop ship dates are automatically updated from the purchase order. Um, so it just saves, that just saves time. And then um, what we're working on right now is, a, is when, that, when that happens, the business, uh, with the new business events, that it'll figure out when that happens. And then when all the dates on your drop shipments are dates to the uh, customer. So, um, so that was a little bit of a customization. Probably one of the biggest customizations that we really liked that was presented at at the summit last year is the WIP customization um, for um, projects where we have when and whenever a project is created, it automatically creates a um, a project within our pro so we have a project so and whenever a project is created, it automatically creates a um, 
a project within our pro so we have a project so if we have a Houston project it automatically creates a in the project Houston warehouse um, it automatically creates a bin location that is the same project as the project number so we buy a lot of of um, our purchase orders are assigned directly to a project right and so when we we buy it we buy it specifically for that project not for for um, inventory so we had it flow directly from the purchase order into work in process using that bin location and the project warehouse so that was quite well, a customization like item a stock item is it it's a stock item not a non-stock item we can do both okay so for the stock item scenario that's the pain point i've seen where i put it yes. on the po and i receive it and even though it's tagged to a project it goes into inventory sounds like you Indeed. customized it to go directly to project as an actual cost yeah as we like not that. as a cost of goods sold but as a whip and then once the job is completed, then we allocate it out of WIP down to cost of goods sold. Which you can so easily does, go just straight to cost of goods sold, but because of the length of some of our projects and it going across across months, we wanted to make sure we knew what was cost of goods sold and what was WIP, right? But uh, as far as inventory goes, when I receive that PO, it maybe only spends a split second in inventory PO it maybe only spends a split second in inventory. It goes right to the project Correct. as a cost. cost. I like that. Yes. Yeah, that I'm curious that, some... I'm curious how you then flip it. What mechanism do you use as an allocation rule or billing rule to then change it from being a WIP cost to a cost of goods sold? It's an allocation rule. Okay. And that's and so then that's done by that the the allocations are actually done by our controller. So the job gets done, boom, he creates that, um, and they're finalized and invoiced. He allocates everything down, um, which is just Love a couple it. quicks. And, I think it's uh, a, a pain point for a number of Acumatica customers. So thanks for going through the huge. Over -over. It's a huge pain point. That was this was that was probably. Um, our biggest frustration when we were going, this was that was probably um, our biggest frustration when we were going, when we were implementing is trying to figure out how to manage WIP and why we didn't go service to begin with, because we could do that customization with WIP. And right. truthfully, it, I have to give clients first um, all the credit on that. They're the ones that did it. They're the ones you know we kept talking it through and. And one of their guys came up with um, the solution. So, I mean, just shows you how valuable having a really good partner is of understanding what you want to do and why it's so important to your business. So, but it's amazing yeah, to it's, how many details you remember that you, you weren't just implementing GL, AP, and AR. Some people have trouble doing just that in 60 days. <laughs> I'd say most people. And you were able to do. <laughs> Much more than that. <laughs> in a very short amount of time. It's really impressive. It shows why you're a customer of the year. <laughs> uh, I just think it's a lot of motivation. So um, I would like to talk about our latest customization that was um, really um, kind of cool. I mean, it, it's uh, um, it, it really shows you the care and generosity of Acumatic and the Acumatica community. Um, so we're a critical infrastructure, right? And I have guys, I have 40 technicians that are going out every single day to travel around the country and going into some really, some of the places are pretty bad COVID hotspots, you know, they're going into hospitals and we wanted to be able to make sure that we touch base with each of these guys every single day and so we were calling them and talking to them every day and then some regulations came down from a single day and so we were calling them and talking to them every day and then some regulations came down from 
from um, uh, the CDC along with some of our major customers and requesting that every single day we ask our, co our, our critical infrastructure workers four questions. We had to find out, you know, do they have a temperature? If you have a temperature, you know, we had a protocol, what we did. Have you come in contact with anybody with COVID-19? Are you having any symptoms? And are you having, um, um, where were you? And then we wanted to make sure we knew where their travel history were, was. Where were you the last few days? And we, we, had, we started to put together kind of a spreadsheet. We had people calling manually. And I reached out to Kim Plank that, um, put us in touch with some people over at Acumatica. The hard joy. about this. Oh, a joy. Yes, okay. Okay. Yeah, a joy and a risk so about. And so I reached out to them and I said, I said, look, I don't have any developers in my, in my group. I got, again, it's, you know, kind of getting up to speed, a young gentleman, very talented, but really don't have any developers. I don't have any resources and I don't have any, any, um, you know, really budget for this, but this is what I want to do, and I want to be able to send out a push notification every day to our, our team. They be able to answer these phone, these these deals from their phone, and it feeds back into our into Acumatica. It logs their answers, and then spits out any exceptions. So we we can, you know, not only are we touching our team every single day, we're collecting the data, and we can show the data that we need. To be able to, you know, you know, hey, if I've been in X Y Z Z state or X Y Z city, I can't go into their their facility for 14 days. So it allowed us to pull a tracking history. It allowed to make sure our team was safe. And these guys responded and created this customization called Acumatica Surveys. And within two weeks. They had put together a team, developed it, launched it, and put it out to us. And so we we are now running this new thing called Acumatica Surveys for our team, where we can push out daily a survey to them. It comes up; it's a push notification onto their phone. Um, if they don't, and they and if they don't click on it, their manager gets you know notifications that they need to click on it, and. It's just the outpouring of support from a, um, a Joy um, and Suresh and and Suresh and uh, these guys on what they were able to do. I mean, I, I know I'm missing some names, but man, I was I'm, I was emotionally just moved at how much they cared about our team and how. And, and, and supporting us on this. And it's just, what they did is just freaking cool. And I can just see so many other applications now coming off of this. Um, you know, right and now it's just an end. Now, you're, huh? you're using this live today. Yeah, we, solution. yeah we went live um, four weeks ago, I think, three wow. weeks ago. That's on awesome. It. And, yeah, so we launched... Oh, let me go out and click on the survey, survey responses. Um, four, see, 417 responses. Um, four, see, 417 we went live. We were testing on 416, 417 we went live. 421 when we were doing some troubleshooting. Um, I think we just pushed, we pushed out last week another update. There was this one little update on the phone that was, wasn't allowing them to, they had to double, double click an entry. Um, but yeah, we went live and it was just, you know, I think the initial email request to Kim Plank went out um, early April. I'm glad you brought that one up. I mean, that's a level of compliance that I think a lot of companies are going to be hitting, not just short term, but for the longer term. I'm glad you brought that one up. I'm going to put a link in this uh, uh, audio post <laughs> to an article that Harsha wrote up on this because I know he participated in that. Oh, um, yeah. He participated in that. Oh, um, yeah. So he, was a, he was a rock star on that, just a rock star on that. Yeah. 
No, uh, yeah, the original request went out on 331 to Kim Plank, and then Kim Plank worked with a joy, and then a joy really put the team together of um, putting all that, putting this in. And I mean, those guys. That's really cool. I mean, it's. I just. It just makes you proud to work with a company that, you know, sees an opportunity to, one, do the right thing, two, help help people in a in a in a, you know, a non natural crisis situation, and then three, come up with a solution in such a short time frame that not only impacts what what you need now to be compliant and to take care of your team out to my team now, right? But let's say you, we add in, um, you know, customer portals and you can start surveying out to your customer or they're looking at the ability not only to be able to take in a response just through if you're in Acumatica as a customer, but maybe as a non-customer, I can send out so when I, so maybe every job that I um, I finish and complete every project I can send out a survey to the customer and say hey how did my text do did they leave the place clean anything else that you need so and you get this feedback coming in that you can that, that feedback loop that um, you know from your team and from your customer base and I really see that this is something that that it's just another one of those functionalities that you would typically have gone out to some other outside source to be able to to be able to do that now you can do within Acumatica. And I think yeah. I, I really think they're gonna see see a lot of positive response to this this survey and this, you know, creation out of necessity is just really I mean it's it changes it's a game changer. It was for us. I think it's a good example too of the, when you have a licensing model like Acumatica has, it's not based on number of users. It enables these types of snippets where you can do them and you know you're not going to get hit with additional licensing fees for bringing in more people into the system. You, yeah, you know, I, I forget about that um, so often because it, it's just become commonplace that we, I mean, that's what we, what we know now, but you know, that was one of our number one decisions of why we chose Acumatica is because we, you know, that was one of our number one decisions of why we chose Acumatica is because we could put everybody in our company on the same platform using the same information, whether you were a level one technician all the way up to CEO of the company, you would have access to the same information that you are allowed access to, right? And the sharing, I mean, it, was, it wasn't long that the technicians soon learn that when they go out to projects, hey, here's the whole scope of work that, 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 that was what the engineer and the salesperson worked through. Here's how they expected us and how many hours they expected us to do the job. And then, and then what's interesting then, then that started feedback from the tech back, from the technician back to the engineer saying, hey, wait a second, you got way too much time or hey, <laughs> how do you expect us to move, you know, uh, 400 pound batteries in one day? And those led to conversations that all, oh, that created this continual feedback to improve our quoting processes and, and improve our engineering and improve expectations with the technicians. You know, there's a, our guys want to do great work. And I think that most people's companies you have those people that want to do great work. And when they see in there what the expectations is, our technicians wanted to to meet or exceed those expectations. And they fed back why they couldn't do that. And then that created our engineers to up their game on what they were engineering. And 
it's it's interesting. We start we, it, that feedback loop is so important. You know, we just we've seen our margins. You know, at Interstate we were running around 18 to 21 percent margins. Now we're hitting 30 to 31, and it's not because we're quoting at a higher dollar. In fact, a lot of times we're quoting at less than what we did it before. But the communication and the feedback loop of what's going back into the quote, and then the feedback and the feed down of what the expectation is to the technician is so much more accurate and clear that we can operate so much more efficiently. I love that point. I mean, I totally agree with you. Most employees want to do a great job and do do it too, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. It's, you know, and just the fact that it's all laid over on a great accounting system. I mean, how, you know, I mean, that's, uh, our uh, our controller came uh, came from a company that just implemented NetSuite, and he was so impressed with uh, Acumatica, you know, and then getting everything up and running, he was very big, you know, very important part of getting that up and running and going for us. And so but he was really impressed with how easy it was to get up and get going, but, you know, how easy it was to find problems and how quickly you could drill down into the nth degree. So if you wanted to know, hey, why a project is over budget, Within three clicks, we can go in and say, okay, run my profit. We created a job profitability report to tell us, you know, where we're at. Clicks, we can go in and say, okay, run my profit. We created a job profitability report to tell us, you know, where we're at. So anything that's over plus or minus 10% we review because we want to know what we did well and what we did we did we did as well as what we did did um, incorrectly, right? So. We re those get reviewed, but you know the guys can go in. They run the profitability report. They see it, then they can drill in with a couple of clicks. Ah, here's my problem. You know, I had too much you know time with my technicians. Or hey, what's this expense on there? Well, that shit. That expense. Sorry, <laughs> that expense That's is supposed okay. to be no on problem. another project. <laughs> <laughs> We work in some rough environments. <laughs> <laughs> well, the goal of an, an AOD blog audit post, by the way, I didn't say this, is one, we don't do any editing, and two, we publish it right away. And the goal, and the goal is to get the real stories, which are which are raw. And so I, I appreciate yeah. you giving us the real story, but, <laughs> language included. But, you know, it's like, it's like, hey, oh man, that that expense is supposed to be on this other project. You know, and so it allows us to clean up so many problems that we couldn't backtrack before of expenses going from concur hitting E1 and then, then you know, hitting a certain and then trying to tie that to a service program in Davis where you could never root out the root cause problems and fix them. Now we can get to the root cause problems so fast, you know, that it, it's just so clean. And, you know, it's like, you know, at Interstate, we would take 15 to 20 days to close the books, and which, you know, if you're running a business, that's that's ridiculous amount of time. So, you know, you look at what we did with Acumatica when we went live amount of time. So, you know, you look at what we did with Acumatica when we went live. It was painful, right? Anytime I think you go to a new accounting system, it's a little painful. You got to learn and you got to tweak. So. So Agreed. one of the, my biggest frustrations of anybody that implements a software system, especially when I was at large companies, is they would budget for implementation. And then there was no budget to improve and get it up and running. And I'm an engineer by background. I, I you know, I, I came out of the foundry business and, you know, when we put in a new molding machine, there was a budget for putting it in, and then there was a budget to getting it up and running at 90% capacity. And it's the same thing with your operating system. And it's the same thing with your operating system. I mean, if you put something in and then expect it just to run the way you want it and run it 
without putting the effort to fine tune it, you're going to be sorely disappointed. And I see so many people get sorely disappointed. Because, you know, you look at where we're at now, if we hadn't put a lot of effort in in 2019, we wouldn't be where we're at today. So just in a microcosm, the accounting systems, you know, when we went live in December, we were going, we were up and running, we got the accounting system, we were going full blown, everything in there. We didn't have time in there, but you know, we can, we imported it in um, off an Excel sheet. So, but we were up and running right to close. Took us 45 days to close and get accurate numbers. But what do we learn from that? So now and it just kept getting, because we continue to invest in rooting out any problems where things were going to the wrong accounts, time's not getting entered, technicians maybe weren't doing their their time on a regular basis. You know, we kept we kept just getting those those things and we kept rooting out the root cause of why we can't. So now within two days we have preliminaries and within five days we're fully closed. And that is then allowing you to provide actionable data. But, you know, you've got to invest in your system and you've got to continue to invest and do it and continue to find where your problems are and then create, create um, either new processes, dashboards. Dashboards are real powerful. That's one of the things I love about Acumatica. Create, create um, either new processes, dashboards. Dashboards are real powerful. That's one of the things I love about Acumatica. You know, I put up a tech dashboard that shows technicians that that are not putting their time in daily and technicians that have past due expenses and technicians' um, um, utilization rate. Utilization rate being how much time are they charging to projects. Technicians are, are very um, competitive and almost uh, cruel to the person that is in last place on those categories. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I remember sitting in a technician awesome. meeting down in Houston and I popped that up. And as soon as I pop it up, like, look at that. You're making the whole thing. It's like, ah. But, you know, I mean, it was it was fun and motivational at the same time because because you know hey you know these guys wanted to be successful and they and it was that you know fun you know clubhouse type of you know camaraderie of beating up the guy that wasn't being but then they turned around <laughs> and said why aren't you doing it this way and why aren't you doing it you know hey you know there's no reason for your expense report to be done you I mean as soon as you, you know, fill up that gas tank, you put your thumb on the dang, dang um, iPhone, and you snap a picture of it right there. It takes two seconds, and you're done. Don't wait till the end of the week. So, yeah, right. that's fun. <laughs> but, you know, those dashboards are continuous, Just that continuous improvement mindset that you have, I really like that. I mean, I, I totally agree. I feel like a, any ERP system. So, yeah, that's right. fun. <laughs> but, you know, those dashboards are continuous. Just that continuous improvement mindset that you have, I really like that. I mean, I, I totally agree. I feel like a, any ERP system is, it's not a destination. It's really a journey. It's an ongoing journey. Because the business is always adapting, and it, it seems like you really have that mindset. And I think maybe, like you mentioned earlier, with service, there's still always the challenge of keeping that mindset in the forefront of the whole team and not just one person. But I really love hearing stories like that where you just keep innovating and keep doing new things in the system. Yeah, that's a, it's a lot of fun. You know, I think I think our biggest downfall right now is we haven't been documenting some of the things. So we've added a new um, Power Storage Solutions how-to wiki, and we have our full quote the cash cycle out there, and it's all kind of picturegrams. And then as you click in from business accounts to contacts to opportunity projects. We have our processes in there, and we're dropping in videos, you know, now that, that cool. um, you know, so that's a, All that's regular a pretty, 
the regular help wiki engine in Acumatica. Yeah. It, it, um, well, yeah, we thought the the regular wiki um, help stuff that seemed to be really good for the man the upper ten percent of people that really dig in. We needed something a little bit more um, written a little bit more a little simpler. You know, it's like you know I don't need to continue to click into the setups and all that type of stuff. So you know, you know, when you click on business accounts, for example, you know, it goes in and, and it's you know, when would you use business accounts? Why do we use business accounts? And then how do you navigate to it? You know, clicks that you get from the um, the how-to um, things because I think the how-to was good for me. It was good for my IT guy, but it, I began to lose the salespeople and the customer service people because they really kind of focused on how, you know, kind of, hey, well, what do I need to click? What do I need to do, right? They don't they don't want all the background side of that. that makes sense? I like that. Yeah. So. Well, hey, other, than, uh, really needing, cool. uh, other than needing to take a long overdue vacation, what, what other projects, Acumatica projects, do you have on the, the horizon there? <laughs> um, so we're really, we're, so the big thing we're, we're working on right now is um, really fine-tuning our CRM, our quoting process, um, where we're really, I, I think um, we're trying to find easier ways. We, I, I think um, we're trying to find easier ways. We, a lot of our projects require a lot of customization, um, so we're entering a lot of items every day um, for those specific um, projects. So how do we how do we do that and do that better? Our guys like to quote out of Excel, so we're really looking to maybe try to figure out how to push their quotes up out of Excel um, into Acumatica. Um, we're going to revisit um, service in the fall. Um, we got to make a uh, we got to make a, a decision on which direction we want to go there. So I think that's a big one for us um, on what direction we're going to go there. So those are uh, we got to yeah, trying to see what else I have on my roadmap. Um, automation of um, business act uh, using the new business events. Um, working on auto business act uh, using the new business events. Um, working on automating some of that. Uh, now I'm opening up my roadmap real quick. See what I missed. Um, implementing. Uh, <laughs> I know it's not. I mean security. We're we're gonna we haven't implemented the dual authentication security. I think that's real big on um, doing that. Um, and then uh, we just did uh, inventory forecasting um, and inventory planning. So that was a that's a nice little update that we put in um, just a lot in the last couple of weeks. And then um, we're customizing commissions um, right now because our commission structure didn't fit the Acumatica commission structure. So we're customizing some commission structures so we can. Um, Get accurate commissions um, very quickly, and accurate commissions um, very quickly, and so we don't have to spend as much time um, working on, you know. And what's really cool is in our sales team will have a dashboard, and they can just watch their commissions as it's invoiced, as we invoice the customer. They can and and just keep up with it, and then. Um, some automating that. Uh, so let's see, what else I got going? On? Oh, and I think one of the other things that we have planned for third quarter, which I think is kind of cool, is trying to we're uh, we do a lot of PM work, and our PM work generates um, two different types of quotes. One is a a um, project, you know, really that we're going to come in and we're going to redo the whole system. And then the other one is is pre, is more of a preventive maintenance. Hey, we're out there doing that, and I need more of a preventive maintenance. Hey, we're out there doing that, and I need um, a little flame arrestor that goes on top of the battery for safety, or 
hey, I need um, another piece to cover cover the electrical contacts and once again. So we've been starting to work with some of our major customers where now they're giving us a flat budget just to go ahead and fix um, all safety stuff. So we, we're working on taking, um, oh, what's that called? Um, taking where our opportunities are tied to a, what's that called? Marketing. A marketing campaign. And then, then okay. so when those come back in, that we we tie it to a marketing campaign with a budget that we have with our customers and then we can report that back to them throughout the month but then we're also then working on okay how do you take that opportunity and then get that um, done so what we want to do is is order whatever we need for the safety compliance to match up to the next quarterly pm so that's a and that's that's a it, it's really cool because it just it creates revenue generation that we I think we were losing um, out on in our old system because we didn't it didn't follow the path through really well of making sure that we got the we got the action requested for safety that then created action to order product and get it assigned to the next quarterly PM project. And we've been really working on that, um, starting to work on that. And I think that's going to, that's going to. The marketing really campaign done. piece is interesting. It sounds to me like a softer project. That's kind of how you're using it. It is. It is kind of. Um, interesting use of that. I, I, like think, that. I think we use projects a little bit different than a lot of people. Um, and, and I, than what Acumatica was intended it for. But um, we seem to get a lot out of it for what we what we do and what we did what we get. So I'm 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 real pleased with that. Awesome so, stuff. But Love we're it. working on oh and and we're working on rolling in email marketing. So that's gonna that's something else. And then uh then twenty twenty one yeah, I guess it is 2020, right? 2021, probably looking um, we're working on um, on updating our website and looking to integrate. Yeah, I guess it is 2020, right? 2021, probably looking um, we're working on um, on updating our website and looking to integrate in um, inventory and e-commerce probably sometime in 2021 to to um, Acumatica. I mean, it's just, you know. You do any it's, electronic payment, customers uh, paying electronically? Uh, no. No, we do not. We do, we, we have ACH and, um, you know, the new, uh, the new payment application upgrade in 2020 was really, or 2019 was really nice, by the way. Um, but no, we we are not doing anything on any electronic payments. Well, sounds like you got a a good sized list to keep you busy this year. <laughs> keep running at the same speed. I do. I do. Uh, I you know, someone somebody once told me I is is isn't you know you look at how far we've come and how easy things are to do in the system now. It's like, but you know, you're never satisfied. And I was like, no, because things could be easier. We could be generating new revenue some other way, right? It would be easier. We could be generating new revenue some other way, right? Or we could be eliminating this step because, you know, you know, I'm doing, we're doing the same amount of work that we did at Interstate with, 15 less people, and we're managing it better and more effectively. And if I'm not doing it, somebody else is going to do it, and I become uncompetitive in the market. So That's a great we'll stuff. You. Well, I think I've about talked myself well, out here. 
<laughs> hey, I, you're, you're a busy guy, and I, I really appreciate uh, you coming on and, and sharing your stuff with us. Uh, much appreciated. Thank you. Well, thank you for inviting me. It's, you know, it's it, for me, it's it's a pleasure to share our story, and hopefully somebody – me, it's, it's a pleasure to share our story, and hopefully somebody sees something that they can use. Um, but it's also just – it it gives you a chance to reflect on how far you've come and it's and you know that's and that's real rewarding to to us as a company to see how far we've come it's nice to take a step back sometime you know, when you're dealing with things on a day-to-day -day basis <laughs>